Hey, it's Friday and today we are flying back from Congo to the UK. Tonight, actually, our flight leaves at 9 p.m. and it's currently 9 a.m. So I have the day to sort stuff out, which is good. I thought I'd bring you along on my packing prep day, a little bit on the journey and yeah, just for the rest of the weekend, probably a, a little weekend vlog to mix things up. I have a lot to do today. I have actually deliberately done no packing in order to leave it all for today because I find that packing expands to fill the time that you give to it. So I didn't want to give it more than a day. I have still a bit of admin stuff to do with leaving, like passenger locator form, a little bit of that kind of thing. We've got our COVID negative tests through this morning by email, which is wonderful, delighted about that. So we can go ahead, all systems go, and yeah, I'll bring you along on the journey. And obviously, most importantly, what I decide to read on the journey. So I've just made a list of all of the different admin things that I need to not forget to do. And then I've also made a little timetable for the day. Basically, I still have a load of computer stuff to do, so I'm gonna just do that first, because it's nice and easy, and it also kind of needs to be done before I can do the other stuff. Then I'm gonna make sure I've printed everything, got copies of it. Then I'm gonna spend the rest of the day packing, because I am leaving for three months, and I haven't packed anything, which is fine. It actually, it's not much difference packing for three months than for a week, but still. Um, need to get on with that and then if I finish that I'm just going to try and tidy up the house a bit and then the last half an hour before we have to leave for the airport even though our flight's not until 9 p.m we have to leave like really early because traffic can be bad and because getting through the airport in Kinshasa can take hours and hours so I'm just going to do the last little things that you need to do to the house before leaving on holiday so yeah let's get on with computer admin for the next hour or so hopefully I can get everything done in the next hour It's 11.30, just gone 11.30 as you can see, and I have only just now finished doing all of the computer admin stuff that I planned to do in the first hour. We also got an email from the airline saying that the traffic's really bad in Kinshasa and they recommend that we leave Centreville by 3 p.m. at the latest. And remember, our flight's at nine, so that's like, we need to leave six hours before our flight and the airport is only like less than an hour's drive away normally. Um, but yeah. It can be super, super busy at Kinshasa Airport, so Tom's going to try and change our transport so that we can leave earlier, and that obviously means that I have less time than I'd planned to get things done for the rest of the day, so I'm going to go and print everything that I can possibly print now. We're just waiting on a guy to come and deliver our paper copy of our COVID certificates. Like, we've had the email saying that we're negative, but we have to get an actual physical, like, stamped copy. Um, so that's the only thing that we're missing. Everything else is in my control. So I'm going to go and print everything that needs printing, and then I'm going to get packing for myself and a bit for Tom as well, if I can, because, yeah, we're running a bit low on time and he's also working today, so lots to do. So, reading-wise, this is the rest of my summer TBR pile that I made. Um, I've read The Lord of the Rings from it and a couple of other things. I am not going to bring this with me to the UK because I don't have space and the whole time that I'm in the UK I'm going to have access to other people's books, so like all of my mum's library and all of Tom's mum's library and I know that they both have loads of things I want to read and so I'm really going to try and bring the very bare minimum with me. I'm just going to leave this, this can turn into an autumn TBR pile, I'll finish it off when I get back. The things that I am going to take from my bedside table the Rainbow, which I started reading for the 1900-1950 readathon and then honestly completely forgot about. I'm really maybe like 50 pages through. I'm going to take this because it's on my currently reading list on good reason. I need to do a bit of a polishing off of that. I'm going to take these two Winnie the Pooh books because I had an exchange with a friend about Gormenghast, which if you've watched any of my videos lately you'll know I'm obsessed with. And we made a deal, he said, if I read Winnie the Pooh, he would read Gormenghast. So I'm going to reread these before I hopefully meet up with him at some point during my time back in the UK. These are going to go in my suitcase and then I'll show you downstairs what I'm going to take for my carry-on reading for the journey. I was really struggling to work out what to read and then it came to me like a flash. I knew it's just like, you know when you know 100% the book that you want to read? That's why I love being a mood reader most of the time. My Brilliant Friend by Elena Ferrante. What a hideous cover. This book, people have been telling me honestly for probably like 10 years or whenever it first came out since then, that I will love it and that I need to read it. It's about 300 pages long, so I don't know if I'll completely finish it on the journey. Normally I try and read a whole book 
when I go on a long haul flight just because I just think it's so fun and satisfying to read a whole book all in one go. The reason that I've been holding back reading it in Congo is because I didn't want to get to the end of the first volume and then desperately want to read the next three and not be able to access them or like want to buy them in book copy if I really loved them and not be able to do that. So if I read this on the way back to the UK and then if I love it, which hopefully I will, I will be able to move right on to the rest of the quartet which will be really fun. I also have some quite good audio books on my phone so I reckon I'm going to be able to get through something in its entirety even if it isn't this because one of them is a children's book it's called Children of the Famine or something like that. I think it's about the potato famine in Ireland. It's only about three and a half hours long on audiobook and it's unabridged, so it's clearly a really short story. So I'm hoping to potentially get through that. I've also got Dear Mrs. Bird, which I think is just a really like nice, light, fun listen about an agony aunt kind of column during the First or Second World War. So that's my reading. I need to get on with packing because we're running a bit late. I'm a bit stressed. It's going to be okay. It's always like this. So I've basically just done what I can only describe as the equivalent of a brain dump, but with stuff. I've just gone through my wardrobe and thrown like everything which I think I might want or need into my suitcase. And now I'm going to use my extremely handy master list that I made once of all the things that I might need when I go away and just check through, make sure that I haven't missed anything. And then I'm going to pack it actually neatly and also get rid of some stuff because I've got more clothes in here than I have space for or need for. Sunday, I'm home and I actually had a particularly productive reading weekend because I've actually ended up reading three books in three days which is definitely the most I have ever read in a weekend journey home. So I'm gonna go through them in chronological order of the way that I finished them. The first book was called Under the Horizon Tree by Marita Conlon McKenna. This was a children's book, it was a quest narrative about three children who have to walk across Ireland during the potato famine of I think the 1850s. It was pretty much exactly what I anticipated the book was going to be and I really really enjoyed it for that. It really reminded me of The Silver Sword which is another one of my favourite children's books which tells the story of three Polish refugees who trek across Poland trying to find their parents after the end of the Second World War. Obviously it's a story which is very sad, which is full of hardship and peril and challenges, but is also tempered enough to be something that children could read and not be traumatised by, and I felt like Conlon McKenna did a fantastic job of not sugarcoating anything. This book does have death in it, it has obviously near starvation, illness, the workhouses, the breaking up of families, lots of really big painful issues but I think presented in a way that I feel I would have been able to have read this as a child. I also think I would have really enjoyed this. This was the kind of book that I really enjoyed as a child. Something which I really appreciated reading it as an adult is I felt like the author really didn't ignore the pain of the adults that existed within this book. So particularly the mother, there's a scene where she has to leave home in order to find food and provide for her family and you really felt her pain and the agony of being in that inhumane situation of having to make a choice as to whether you leave your young children alone in order to try and provide for them or whether you stay with them to try and protect them. That was 
really, really moving and really well done. Overall, I feel like I learned a little bit more about the Irish potato famine, which is something that I don't know very much about at all. And it was also just a really gripping, engaging, well-written book. It's actually the first in a trilogy. I'm quite intrigued to see where the trilogy goes. I think the next book is about one of the girls moving across to America. So that was the first book that I listened to and I listened to the whole of that on Friday night on my first overnight flight. When I finished it, I then started Dear Mrs. Bird by AJ Pierce. This is a women's historical fiction novel about a girl in her early 20s called Emmy Lakes who gets a job in what she initially believes is being a war correspondent but turns out to be typing up the problem pages in a women's magazine for Mrs. Bird who is this old, cranky, completely uncompassionate agony aunt. This book actually really surprised me and really exceeded my expectations. So the first half of it or so, which I listened to it still on the journey, was kind of exactly what I expected to get out of this book, which was a jolly, cheerful, engaging, funny book set during the Blitz. It was more focused on female friendship than I'd anticipated, less of a romance. It did have a bit of romance in it, but it wasn't as big of a part of it as I thought that it was going to be. But it was fun, it was upbeat. Emmy Lakes is just a delightful character to spend time with. She's a real go-getter, she's really positive and optimistic, and so is her best friend Bunty, who's quite a big character in the novel. And it was just very entertaining and light-hearted, and I enjoyed it a lot. It was a wonderful book to read when I was in that sort of sluggish, tired state that you often get into when you're on a long-haul flight. So that took me for the rest of overnight Friday and most of Saturday. But I then ended up listening to it on Saturday night as I lay in bed because I couldn't sleep for no good reason. And it was absolutely brilliant in a way that I didn't anticipate in terms of I knew that there was obviously going to be some sort of sad consequence of the fact that this book was set during the Blitz because you never get a book about the war without there being some kind of death or suffering in it. Like, that just doesn't happen. So I knew that something was going to go wrong, but the way in which AJ Pierce handled the thing going wrong was a lot more powerful and poignant than I anticipated that it was going to be. It really looked at small human errors that can have a profound effect, and I felt so painfully for Emmy and all the suffering that she went through because it just felt like something that could so easily have been me. What it explored really well was the way that grief and suffering doesn't necessarily just affect an individual who's lost somebody but affects those around them and can affect their relationships and can cause people who are normally kind and generous to become bitter and sad and angry and I thought that it looked at all of that really well and I ended up lying in bed for hours listening to it and crying because it was so moving. The fact that I built up such a rapport with the characters and become so fond of them really made it feel like these were my friends who were suffering. Overall it was a book that just had a much wider emotional range than I initially credited it for. I'm really happy as well because when I went to look on Goodreads, I realised that only last month a sequel has been published. So Dear Mrs. Bird came out, I think in 2018, like a few years ago, and she's just published a sequel last month called Yours Cheerfully, which is perfect timing. So I'm really keen to spend more time with the characters from this book. I just feel really fond of them. So that was the second book. And then of course we have my Brilliant Friend, which I read throughout the flight and which I ended up finishing this morning. So I read, I think, probably about half of it or so during the flight, and then I finished the rest of it today. Um, this was not what I expected at all. I feel like the books have gone in order from being 100% what I expected, 50% what I expected, pretty much 0% what I expected. And that definitely did, unfortunately, negatively impact my enjoyment of it. Had I known exactly what I was going into when I started reading this, I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more. I presumed that this story, because a lot of people had recommended it to me and said that they thought that I would like it, I thought it was going to be a lot lighter and like, I thought it would be nicely written but I thought that it would be a lot less dark than it was. I also thought that it was going to be about female friendship which it is but not female friendship in a way that I really recognise it. For me this was much more a novel about obsession and it was relentlessly dark and violent and sad and reminded me a lot more of a book like Educated by Tara Westover if it was being told by somebody who knew Tara from the outside and was weirdly obsessed with her. That's kind of what it read like. So we have two characters, Elena or Lenu, she's also sometimes called, and her best friend Leela and the story is told in first person from Lenu's perspective and she goes from her childhood up to being of marriageable age talking about her friendship, I feel like I have to put it in inverted commas every time because I just didn't feel this as a friendship, talking about her friendship with Leela. And these girls are growing up in a slum in Naples in the 1950s, so post-war, and they are just surrounded by abuse and violence and gangs, and it's about 
really it's about this underprivileged childhood from the perspective of children who don't realise that they're having an underprivileged childhood. It was really well written, it felt very cinematic, I thought the observation was excellent, so the writing style and a little bit also the subject matter reminded me of Sally Rooney, so if you're really into that style of writing then I think that you would also like this. I felt towards this quite similar to the way that I felt towards Sally Rooney's books in that I felt like objectively it was good but it just maybe wasn't really for me. I do find it an issue when I really actively don't like any of the characters in a book and that is how I felt about this book, like particularly the fact that the best friend in this is just relentlessly horrible and I know that she is traumatised and I know that she has a difficult childhood but I couldn't see any reason why Lenu would want to be her friend so consistently. It did do so well at being the story of a place, I felt like it had such an insight into the community that these girls lived in. It also has a really wide range of characters, so there's a character list at the beginning of all the different families and the different characters in it and it is one of those books, maybe a little bit Russian literature-esque, where not only do you have multiple characters but the characters often have multiple names that they're each called and I did have to refer to the character list numerous times throughout it because the characters come into it a lot and there's a lot of them coming into it a lot and so you're constantly having to try and remember who everybody is. It made the community feel quite disorientating, quite overwhelming and also a bit threatening because you could never remember when somebody new came in whether they were particularly violent and dangerous or not and as a general rule they were. I ended up giving it three and a half stars because I feel like what it did, it did really really well. I think a lot of people really would find it brilliant but it just wasn't completely my cup of tea. A very quick non-bookish thing that I've consumed over this weekend, which I kind of wanted to mention just because I really enjoyed it, was this documentary that I watched which was called Silver Feet and it was this 1995 documentary following these 18 year old girls as they auditioned for ballet companies and I just found it so incredibly moving because it looked at these young women for whom ballet was their lifelong dream and basically exposed the fact that for so many young women it's not possible to become a professional ballerina and as somebody who in my younger days really wanted to be a professional ballerina and worked incredibly hard towards that goal I was literally crying watching it just feeling such a sense of connection with these girls and such a sort of nostalgia for my own dancing childhood adolescence. I thought it was really sensitively and beautifully done and it was so nice to watch something about ballet which wasn't just like, look at this person, they worked hard enough and they became a professional ballerina. So if you're into ballet then I would recommend it, I found it a really good watch. I've also started watching the extended editions of the Lord of the Rings films, they're on DVD and they're literally split over two DVDs each film. So I watched the first half of The Fellowship of the Rings last night, which I enjoyed. I'm gonna just watch half a film every night and enjoy my treat of watching the films after having finished reading all the books. So yeah, here I am back in good old UK. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Do comment down below what kind of books you like to read or listen to when you're traveling. If you enjoyed this video, I'd be really grateful if you could hit the like button and subscribe if you're new here and would like to see more. I hope you're all doing really well. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon in another video. Goodbye.